Welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. Yes, my final, my final, uh, I, the final item here is um, uh, something that was written up earlier this week. It was a poll by the Washington Post and George Mason University about trust and issues like uh, data usage and, and privacy. And one of the striking things was that of the main companies listed, and it was like, I don't have the full list here, but it was like Facebook and Amazon, Google, Apple, uh, you know, sort of the usual suspects. Microsoft was in there. Uh, the only company that was trusted either a great deal or a good amount was Amazon. That was the only company that crossed the 50% threshold, meaning more more people trusted it than not. And that was at 53%, so just just barely. Um, everybody else, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Microsoft, Apple, uh, Google, um, were, were didn't cross 50%. And companies like Facebook and TikTok and Instagram had large majorities, 70 plus percent, 60 plus percent, that did not trust them. They were they were n- not trusted at all, or or um, you know had had limited uh, trust. And there was a lot of paranoia expressed in the survey. Seven out of ten people said that they thought their phones were listening to what they did without consent, which is not happening. But listening is sort of a broader metaphor of tracking and c- capturing data is is accurate. So there, there's there's a lot of paranoia and distrust out in the world. Um, and what's what's fascinating to me is that these are uh, services and companies that we interact with every day and we could not run our, you know, we three could not do our jobs exist without using these tools and companies. And yet here we are as a, as a country um, fundamentally distrusting these companies that we are, are dependent upon. And I, I, I just... You know, and I, 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 Amazon is the only one that sort of comes out looking pretty okay in this. And even Apple with its, uh, you know, Apple, Apple Google, and, uh, and Microsoft were sort of in the middle. Mm-hmm. And even Apple with all its privacy marketing is still not above, you know, it's still a little bit underwater here. So that, that, that is just a kind of a fascinating paradox to me is that we, we use Facebook, we use Google, we use uh, all these services, and yet we on some very basic visceral level, do not. And Mike them. truly couldn't live without Apple devices. We know that. So in some, in some cases, it's even it's, more than being able to do our work. It's being able to survive. Right. The I, interesting anecdote is my wife who wanted to disassociate, wanted to have less information in Google's hands. And so I helped her set up her iPhone to be private and to use DuckDuckGo. And so she has largely stepped away from Google. And, you know, in the last two years, maybe, she has expressed the desire to step away from Amazon, but hasn't been able to. Right. Right. We live in a rural market where you can't get things locally. And then you need something. Where do you get it? And it's you know, Amazon's the obvious place. Well, to some extent, though, this distrust reflects the control and influence that corporations have in our society and the abuses that they have used with them, the amount of, of politicking they do and the influence they've had over policy and all of that stuff. So it really reflects the contradiction of our society as much as it does any of these specific individual companies. And this distrust is reflected across the political spectrum, largely dr- drives Trump supporters as much as it drives AOC supporters, is a life experience in which these companies largely are not trustworthy and they're driving too much of our life. It's, and I, again, I don't think it's any specific company. I think it's the corporate relationship to government in well, general. Well, there's, there's a, there's a, you said a lot of stuff and we, we don't have time to go into all of it. I mean, there's, there, the, you know, distrust is sort of uh, endemic, rampant in our society generally. Um, but, but I, I mean, I just, um, you know, I, I, we've we've talked a lot about how uh, Facebook um, has very high negatives, but yet people continue to use Facebook. I, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that people have stepped away from Facebook, 
I hear people saying that all the time on Twitter and in LinkedIn, but in, the numbers don't really reflect reflect that. Their their ad revenues, their user numbers don't really reflect that. But um, it, it's also it's also reflective of the fact that these are monopolies. We we have few choices. Now, interestingly, one of the things that I'm writing in today's newsletter, uh, both Brave and DuckDuckGo reported big gains in 2021. You know, Brave is a browser, although they do have a search engine now, and DuckDuckGo is primarily a search engine, although they also have a, brow a mobile browser. And so it seems like just incrementally people are sort of migrating away from these major companies, at least in a couple of cases. And interestingly, DuckDuckGo's market share is a, is going to surpass uh, Yahoo's search search share this year. So that's that's a pretty interesting milestone for them. And I think. To, to circle back, Brave uses a blockchain advertising model to reimburse searchers when they agree to see ads. They actually get paid for the ad in some small amount for watching the ad. So, so it circles back <laughs> to David's point about the value of of blockchain in some contexts. So. Yeah, and there's a there's a much longer discussion to be had about about um, uh, whether or not users are willing to trade their data for small, you know, blockchain style mm -hmm. payments, micro payments. Um, there have been a couple of experiments along those lines that I think haven't been very successful. But it's an interesting it's an interesting idea for another another discussion. I, I would just add one, so, one thing on the trust front. Yeah, um, you know. Of the companies you mentioned, Greg, Amazon is largely not a media company. Um, I mean, they have that's changing, streaming video, but right? Yeah. But they're not. Yeah. You know, they don't have a social property, for example, um, and they don't. They don't really return information uh, in a way that gives them a chokehold on, you know, what people see and what people perceive. Right. They can't. Right. They can't uh, promote disinformation right. or. Uh, so that's number one. And number two, they're also largely not a hardware company. I mean, yes, there's Alexa devices, but I don't think they're nearly as widespread as an Android phone or an iPhone. And so I think that maybe it's just the. Much to their dismay. Much to their dismay. And, exactly. Not by choice. They've certainly yeah. tried any number yeah. of, of times. But um, I, so I wonder how much of that is just a function of it's actually just easier to avoid Amazon if you don't want to use, you know, if you don't want to buy a product. Uh, whereas, it, as you said, it's basically impossible to avoid Google, Apple, and Facebook these days. So, I mean, Amazon has good has a good reputation. Not and their customer the, service is legitimately good. Yeah, and their customer right. service is very yeah. good. Notwithstanding the proliferation of fake reviews on Amazon, um, and notwithstanding the the manipulation, you know, the Amazon Basics and the manip manipulation of SERPs to promote Amazon right. Basics. But that doesn't hurt consumers that, necessarily. It hurts That doesn't businesses. hurt consumers yeah. and consumers aren't aware yeah. of yeah. that. Right, and Amazon has done a great job in in its its sort of end-to-end -end consumer experience. Now with all the return centers, Kohl's, Whole Foods, um, you know, UPS stores, they have done a great job in giving people a, a good customer experience. I ordered a food product from them that I can't get locally anymore for some reason, Miner's Chicken Stock, which is my favorite <laughs> chicken stock. And it came in rotten <laughs> and it's foodstuffs are not returnable. So I went through the return process, learned it wasn't returnable. And I thought, oh, but they'll give dang. you a refund. So, well, exactly. But I, it wasn't obvious in the no return box, but I immediately got the chat and within three minutes, the chat bot, I think was ready to give me the <laughs> refund, but I think they ultimately gave me a person and they gave me a refund. Very quickly. Well, per perhaps that'll be our Miner's Chicken Stock will be our first sponsor on this podcast. <laughs> all you, all you uh, Blumenthal fanboys out there know what to send him for his birthday now. <laughs> that, My that or bourbon, either. I'll take either. I, I want to see you do an ad for Miner's Chicken Stock, Mike. <laughs> it is the only bullion I've ever, or bullion type <laughs> enrichment that. I even add it to my own homemade chicken stock. That's how <laughs> it's like. It just rounds out the chicken flavor. So, oh, there you I, go. The last two I got were rotten from Amazon. So mm. I'm getting a little gun shy here, and I'm a little oh. worried about where I'm going to source it. You'll have to go directly to the company. I guess. And you can pitch them on the sponsorship <laughs> at that same time. All right. I'm okay. not sure what benefit they would get from it. I guess I read a miner's chicken stock ad every you, week. You are the most authentic pitch man that could ever <laughs> exist. So, you know, you can be the you could be the influencer that really uh, sets them on fire on social media. Nice. So. All, right. All right. 
Okay, with that, we'll uh, end uh, another uh, podcast. We'll see you next week and have a good week, weekend. Um, and a great year. Happy 2022. Yes, exactly. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.